This is Amy, and she is giving us a little tour of this amazing garden that she has built from the ground up, literally. <laughs> All right, what do we got here, Amy? Uh, so the garden is it's at Greg's uh, place here in Hobart, and he plowed up um, about 75 feet by 40 feet, so 40 feet this way and 75 feet that way. Wow. And he just actually added a little we call it the pumpkin annex because both of us <laughs> wanted more pumpkins. Uh, so we started on this end and we planted short season stuff and, and stuff that was more um, happy to be put in the ground uh, during the, um, the more colder months. This bed right here has beets in it though you can't tell. Uh, we've got carrots and peas here, a couple different kinds of peas. This okay. is a... Um, yeah. A pea that's grown for its greens, like the extra shoots. Uh huh. So those are kind of fun. And we've got blossoms, and we're gonna have peas soon, which is exciting. Very cool. Fun fact: <laughs> um, non-organic potatoes are treated with something that um, that makes them not sprout. Oh. So we put them in the ground, and they were in the ground for a month, and they never sprouted. And I was like, I'm never buying a non-organic potato again. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. That is super Anyway, creepy. so we had this bed here and this bed here were also potatoes. And um, we pulled the potatoes and put squash in. So those are delicata, bush delicata squash. Okay. And these are... Oh, here. I see. So they're under these Culligan bottles here. Oh, okay. But um, they're just enjoying the heat, the extra heat from that. And then we kind of figured out a little bit better how to prep the soil. Uh -huh. So we've got beets here, and they're starting to bulb, which is fun. Collard greens and then more kale. And the beets, we have to like oh, be wow. kind of thoughtful about watering them the first little bit, or they won't do this. They'll just bolt and go to seed. So they're kind of fun. I'm going to be harvesting them in the little baby beets in a little while. So are these beet greens? And you yeah. can eat these too, right? Yeah. Because we, I feel like we've gotten a few. You've gotten a few, so yeah. <laughs> Plenty of them. This is another um, bed of carrots. Uh huh. Oh, cool. Um, we've got more lettuces and bush beans and more beets. And here's our spinach. And I'm very sad because the spinach is starting to bolt and um, go to seed, so that's what this is. Oh, I see. And it changes the composition of the of the leaves. Mm -hmm. um, the plant doesn't really want you to eat it while it's going to seed. Oh. So it changes it, makes it a little bit more bitter, but since spinach is so mild anyway, mm -hmm. um, probably I'll keep harvesting and then I'll just yank as things get. So what what causes it to uh, to go to seed instead of have the you know um, it might be a nutrient thing it may have been stressed out as a seedling mm -hmm. um, it's been very well watered here um, because I've been really thoughtful about the about the beets mm -hmm. so um, I don't really know it's sad sometimes a hot spell will do it mm. like if it's like oh it's 75 today okay I'm gonna go to see <laughs> so that's kind of a bummer but um, what ifs we'll put something else in Squash here, 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 and there, and then a little bit of romaine um, inside all of that. Cool. A couple different kinds of string beans. Ooh. This was um, a bunch of sunflowers, and then the slugs ate them, Aww. and so just <laughs> mowed them over. Aww. So I took these and like covered up the ones that I could see so that they would be given a little bit more of a start. And we threw some um, poppy seeds and some cosmos seeds and some cosmos transplants in there. Um, the more flowers we can get growing, the better the squash will get pollinated. Uh -huh. So it's a double horseshoe, um, which is considered like a solar trap, like a sun trap. So the tall things will be in the back and on the sides. 
and the heat will stay in the middle of the garden in the summer, like the high summer. Oh. So we've got all these heat-loving plants in the middle, so celery and peppers and eggplants and tomatoes uh, this year. Wow. And cucumbers and beans on the sides. Um, we had we had a problem with slugs. <laughs> yeah. So we've transplanted um, a number more cucumbers and tran and planted a bunch more cucumbers. Um, the tomatoes have gone in. It's kind of strange. They um, tomatoes look black. Yeah, some of them are. That's crazy. Um, it's kind of a new like a fangled thing that people are doing. These black and blue. So almost all of the tomatoes are setting fruit already, which is interesting. They're not very big, but they're setting fruit. So I'm like, okay. Uh. Um, it may be that I just don't know this soil well enough. I went to the um, I went to the garden store to get compost, but they were out. So I ended up getting like a natural fertilizer, which I wouldn't normally do. I would normally just apply a compost. Um, so yeah, we've got basil coming up okra coming up oh. um, this is holy basil right here which is a nice adaptogenic for all of us stressed out in the pandemic uh, <laughs> yeah and um, here's some amaranth seedlings so these get really tall but the um, greens are good for salads I've been trying to do a red green mix Cool. And then they'll get really big flower heads. And the amaranth you can actually get seeds off of and eat, but um, I'm just getting them for pollination and for greens. Yeah. So the corn's in the back. And we've got, um, we've got uh, two forms of um, colored corn. So there's Painted Mountain, which is a corn for um, corn flour, mm -hmm. and um, and then we also have um, Gem, which is a beautiful heirloom that's been developed and um, it's gorgeous and like iridescent um, corn, like it's so beautiful you like don't even want to eat it. It's so pretty. Wow. Um, so I'm excited to see those, and then we've got different kinds of squash. Some Cinderella pumpkins and some um, big, like Hubbard squash that are like 60 pounds when they're done. You know, Whoa. kind of squash. Like take it to the fair. Yeah, take it to the fair squash. <laughs> and then we're gonna um, we're gonna plant this. The idea was to put in a bunch of more pumpkins and then maybe some more grains, like some um, e you know ear ear corn that that's for eating instead of just grinding. Yeah. Jazz band playing. I'd say this is the best way to garden. It's an amazing <laughs> jazz <laughs> band and <laughs> company. Heck yeah! And it's not raining. Not raining. <laughs> um, I've mostly been doing this with my friend Sherilyn and my daughter and my nephew. And Greg's plowed everything up and provides the water and mm -hmm. um, it's been really cool about me just showing up randomly throughout you know the week and right and cre I mean th this is insane this is a huge amount of work yeah <laughs> but it's got me out of, out of the house sure and it sure, makes sure. me feel like I'm doing something useful both for my community but also for you know like I'm teaching my nephew how to garden and it gets my kid out of the house and active once a week at least and um, yeah and we're you know learning about the life cycles of plants and measuring things and you know yeah that's awesome yeah it's cool I have to ask you also because I saw on Facebook that you make the earrings that oh, you're wearing yeah Will you talk about that for a um, So they are, um, there's a kind of fungus okay. that's called an elf, green elf cup fungus. Uh -huh. And it creates, um, what it does is that it eats um, part of the wood, um, but it doesn't eat the other part of the wood. So it likes, um, it likes wood that is uh, without really 
thick bark, so it likes like uh, alder leaves, or alder trees, and uh, cherry trees, and maple trees, mm -hmm. like vine maple trees. And it will eat them, dye them, um, and then you can cure the wood, and it uh, it's a really pretty color. It's so cool! Um, the wood uh, used to be used in inlaid uh, woodworking called was called green oak. Huh. and um, really prized by woodworkers and there's there's a quite a supply of it if you know where you're looking and what you're looking at and uh -huh. um, the first couple times I saw it in the in the woods I was like oh it looks like a piece of wood that's reacting to like copper you uh -huh. know yeah, or something yeah. like that but once I knew what I was looking at I find it all over the place it's huh. everywhere it really likes um, north-facing slopes next to creeks and rivers so Every time I go hiking, I see it pretty much. Um, some of the ways that we are doing organic gardening here, we're trying not to use pesticides. We have mantids in the garden. What are mantids? Um, praying mantis. Oh, okay. They are very tiny right now. They just hatched. But by the end of the summer, they will be quite big. Uh -huh. um, I had some in my yard, and I'd completely forgotten about them. And I was walking by my front walk, and one like flew up and landed on me and it was like that thing. Yeah. Another thing we're using is coffee sacks to keep the weeds down. Um, we kind of figured out that as we were, you know, working our way through the garden that a lot of the grass that got plowed in was starting to sprout and we were like, huh, how do we deal with this? Right. And um, the row cropping, you know, has been a struggle, but we're still keeping this down because we put basically sheet mulched into the bed so we moved dirt and then we put a layer of weed weed barrier which is the coffee sacks and then put more soil on top so anything that's up here is easier to pull because it's right on the surface it's right on the yeah and uh, you can see this is the thing yeah. we have underneath yeah and do you, were these coffee sacks donated to their cause yeah they're or? free yeah okay. um um the coffee uh, the coffee place is a roaster in Renton, and, and a friend turned me on to it, and I just went, and they they would have given me a thousand, you know, a thousand pound bale if I had been able to fit it in the car. Oh, we wow. tried. <laughs> wow. But I was like, you know, I don't think that's going to work. Pa How do you even, like, you can't pick that up? Um, yeah. <laughs> like a forklift? The forklift, yeah. They Sheesh. used a forklift. And, and he he initially laid it down on a pallet in the back of my truck, and it, and it was just riding too low. So I said, I'll take half of it. And right. So that's what Amy. We'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering how you started this garden and why. Uh, Greg Williamson and I were chatting about um, gardens. He's got this land out here in Hobart, and... Um, and at the time, I was talking about maybe doing some online teaching with a friend, and um, it seemed like um, it could be like a win, 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 win. Yeah. So, like, I could teach the kids about um, gardening. We could talk about um, planting schedules and um, do the math, the seasonal math around all of that, and figure out, you know, spacing and all of those things, practical math that you do in gardening and farming. And then they could maybe get some time out here in the garden. The garden could be growing vegetables for people who were dramatically affected by COVID, um, full-time musicians, people that don't have, you know, artists that don't have alternatives and are being really affected. And, um, so I didn't end up doing the online stuff, but I have been educating my daughter and educating my friend and her daughter and my nephew mm -hmm. um, about organic gardening out here. And all of this is the work that we've done and hoping to you know, really be able to supply produce to, you know, like I'm hoping somewhere between 10 and 15 people a week um, during the high summer where we're, you know, harvesting cucumbers and tomatoes and peppers and all of those summer crops um, so that people who are in the city and may not really even being able to be doing gigging 
can um, spend their money somewhere else. Um, sure. Do, you know, rent or power or, you know, whatever they need um, and allow us to grow um, some of what they're eating. Um, and that was the thing. I, For me, it, it helps me feel prepared, like, emotionally for whatever's coming to know that this food is here and that you know, people that I care about in our community are going to have um, food security, you know? Right. Because if, if they don't have anything, I'm going to give them half of what I have. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm more secure if they're more secure, and plus it's just the right thing to do. Oh. So. Well, you are amazing. And Amy, you're also a musician yourself, an artist, and you've been composing... For how many years? Um, I don't know, maybe about eight. Mm -hmm. Not not super focused. I don't do anything in a super focused way, but <laughs> sure. Well, as as a true artist, stated as a true artist. Uh, well, and and you had uh, you've actually written maybe some protest songs. Yeah. Would you call it? okay? And and where can people find your music if they wanted to check it out? Um, in terms of the sheet music or just me in general? All of it. Um, if you go to Amy Kramer Music on Facebook, I am there and you can make inquiries. Um, the songbook, uh, the songbook was called Shibori Skies, is called Shibori Skies, and I'll print you a copy of it if you want one. Oh, that's very generous it's all of you. original music and yeah, you're welcome to it. Wow. That's Amy. She's generous. Look at that. <laughs> what, are, what are you holding right there? Onions. Onions. White onions and yellow onions. Awesome. And she's sending uh, Jason and I home with a boatload. I'm actually going to show a boatload of greens that we're going to very excited about. Wow. Look at that. We got Tokyo turnips. We got some onions. We got some beets. And then a lot of lettuce, some spinach. Kale and collard greens, did you say? Oh, yeah. Kale and collard greens, it's amazing. And this whole time, we get to be entertained by, oh, look who's sitting in. <laughs> Mr. Castle, the Highland Trumpet Show.